Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Welcome back to the YHPA. Ooh, had to do some yoga for that H. Uh, for another workout of the body and the mind. More specifically, the posterior pituitary part of the mind. If you haven't guessed yet, we will be continuing our discussion of the hypothalamic pituitary axis, or HPA, focusing this time on the posterior lobe of the pituitary. To help with this, we have ventured beyond the anteroom and joined a hyposize class located in the back of the gym. But before we jump into some leg warmers, let's quickly review some of the basics of the HPA. Starting at the top of the axis is the hypothalamus, represented by this super subtle neon hyposize sign. The hypothalamus manages the endocrine system by communicating directly with the two lobes of the pituitary gland, hence the return of our bilobed punching bag. For the anterior lobe, the hypothalamus communicates directly via the release of hormones into the hypophysial portal system, or HPS, a network of capillaries represented by this red net. These hormones, in turn, stimulate the anterior pituitary to release its own hormones. In contrast to this, the hypothalamus connects to the posterior lobe via neurosecretory cells. These originate in the hypothalamus, where they produce antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin, and extend down to the posterior pituitary via axonal projections, depicted here by these totally safe, up-to-code, neuron-like electrical wires. It is here where these hormones are stored and eventually secreted. The critical thing to note here is that the posterior pituitary doesn't produce any hormones. It simply stores and releases them. And with that out of the way, let's get hyposazing. And one and two and pons and more and one and two and pons and more. First up is antidiuretic hormone or ADH. This is the primary hormone involved in regulating body fluid osmolarity and is depicted by this ADH branded cooler. ADH secretion increases in response to two different but related stimuli. The first is high blood or serum osmolarity, which is detected by osmoreceptors in the hypothalamus that then stimulate the posterior pituitary to release ADH. Since high osmolarity refers to a high solute concentration, you can see this depicted by the super concentrated liquid inside this elevated cooler. The second stimulus is volume contraction, which refers to a low blood volume, or hypovolemia, hence the low volume of liquid in this elevated cooler. This is detected as a drop in blood pressure by baroreceptors in the left atrium, carotid artery, and aortic arch. This information is then sent to the hypothalamus via the vagus nerve, which stimulates the release of ADH. Intuitively, the inverse of these two stimuli will decrease ADH secretion, specifically hypervolemia and low serum osmolarity. This is why this ADH bottle is sitting low down on the floor and is filled with a high volume of relatively dilute fluid, 